Hello and welcome. Well, when we look back retrospectively at the levels of eager and enthusiastic lovemaking pre-baby to what happens after a baby is born, there understandably is a significant contrast between the two. Now, the levels of passion in the bedroom go from one extreme to the other with sleep deprivation end up being the biggest anti-aphrodisiac of all, leaving you looking at your bed longing to be able to sleep undisturbed in it. Now, the many changes in your relationship start with the sole focus on the baby and its health and well-being, understandably. So understandably, the shift in your relationship along with the hormonal changes a woman, woman's body goes through can mean the couples easily lose their mojo for a while. Now, to help talk to us about how you can get yours back, we welcome our special guest, Dr. Janet Hall, a parenting expert, a sex coach, hypnotherapist and author of 15 books and 17 audio recordings on this subject alone. Now for the last 40 years, Dr. Jan has um, regularly featured in the media, on television and radio, and she's authored another eight parenting books and 54 audios and eBooks um, in total, which is just incredible. Now, so today, Dr. Jan is going to share with us when and how you can reignite your sex life after a baby is born. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Jan. How are you? I'm very well and very excited to be able to share this subject, which um, far too often tends to be taboo. So it's great to just get everybody acknowledging how important it really is. Couldn't agree with you anymore. So um, before we get stuck into all the questions that I do want to ask you with your 40 years experience in this subject, um, I just wanted to address that we had published your article titled, uh, When and How to uh, Reignite Your Sex Life After a Baby is Born. Now for someone who hasn't read the article yet, can you please tell us what it's about and what inspired you to write it? Um, what inspired me is the many clients that I've seen over the years who uh, come in about a year after the baby is born and uh, say that they're very um, foolish, they feel foolish, um, they are angry perhaps one with the other, uh, typically the man um, is angry with the wife. Um, basically, a year later, they're still not having sex. And when we say sex, we're not just talking about you know, penis in vagina. We are talking about um, intimacy and, and sharing that wonderful quality that makes it all worthwhile. So, you know, it's a really serious um, um, challenge. And medically minded people will just say things as, as um, you know, as, as foolish, <laughs> again, is the word, um, in that, oh, well, you can have sex after six weeks. Well, let me tell you that that very rarely happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's sort of get stuck into all of these questions. And as mentioned earlier, you do have 40 years experience uh, on, on the subject as a sex therapist. So what can you tell us about your experience with helping parents of new babies then? Well, because I'm positioned very much as a sex therapist, um, people come to me through um, the internet mostly nowadays. Um, often through GPs uh, because of the Medicare rebate situation, which is fabulous, even now for telehealth. Uh, but they, um, they are really at some kind of, um, not, we wouldn't want to say a crisis point, but they, they need direction that they're stuck. Okay. So what, I guess, are some of the most common challenges that you parents face with the intimacy post-birth then? Uh, well, it's sort of different from the man's point of view to the woman's point of view. So can uh -huh. I take first, first, first of all, um, let's take the uh, man's point of view because everything has changed. But, well, it's actually changed for both of them. But for the man, it's, um, it's absolutely like, well, I have all this time on my hands and uh, I would like to get my hands on you. <laughs> and there she is. <laughs> there she is sitting there. This was, this was me, Rachel. Um, I had two children and uh, I remember sitting there at three o'clock in the afternoon with a, um, you know, a flannelette um, dressing gown on with the egg yolk still on the front from when, when you had brekkie. Very and attractive, Dr. What, Jan, very that, attractive. Yeah, no, no, not a good look. <laughs> and, and this is what, um, this is the reality of what it's like for her. Uh, being the primary giver. You know, I just wanted to also say it's, it's interesting that with COVID having so many downsides, 
one of the upsides is that um, you know the other partner has been uh, able to be at home. Um, I've loved seeing the men in the park. We, we're just down from Edinburgh Gardens in North Fitzroy, and the men in the park pushing the pusher, and that new mum is home, hopefully with their feet up and having a bit of a nod off. Um, yeah. So anyway, going back to what, what he has to put up with, he's used to being first. Yeah. And you know how the you know how the male ego likes to be stroked. And then suddenly it's not about him. Yes. And and deep down he might be thinking, well, there is egg on her flannelette. She's, <laughs> she's the only woman in the room. And um and I really do have a bit of an itch to scratch. Um and <laughs> And, and somehow or other, I've got to get, um, you know, wired up again because, oh, she looks so tired and emotional and worn out and, you know, the baby's crying and, you know, but he still has his urges. What would what, what my, my, my mother would have said, men, a men, man has his needs. Now, now, I'm not saying that I agree with all this. I'm just saying that this is the line of thought. This is the reality, that goes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that goes along. So what um, is the physical reality of intimacy post-birth then? Well, the, the medicos will say that after six weeks, you're fit to trot. However, I think it very much depends on, on what sort of a pregnancy and birth of course. that the woman had. Um, because if it's been, you know, like it's, uh, so uncomfortable the whole time, uh, maybe there's been an emergency. Maybe there's been a crisis. Um, she may have had uh, episiotomy stitches, um, which can be very uncomfortable. And um, even as I, at the last minute, had to have two caesareans, well, the first one I didn't know I was having and the second one um, was, of course, necessary, um, that, that your pelvic floor actually can become overstretched. And, and so, you know, it's not as easy as you think. So at six weeks also, I, 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 it must be a very old statistic, really, to say six weeks. Um, I can't imagine being um, only with my new baby six weeks and feeling sexy. Again. You know, I'm, if I'm, I'm, I'm breastfeeding uh, or very keen to, which is hugely stressful if it doesn't go easily. And if it is going easily, the hormones have all changed. Mm -hmm. Now you've got your oxytocin, which is your, your, your touching, hugging drug. You love hormone. Um, yep. You know, yeah. You, you don't have your sexy hormone within cooey. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so so why is it important then to take things slowly and gently again? I mean, and how can the, the decision to start too early cause more problems and co can cause more problems internally for women? Well, I'm not the medical doctor, Rachel, but I'm surely it's going to cause injuries. Um, uh, I'm an expert sex therapist I, and one of my really compassionate issues is is called vulvodynia or vaginismus. And that's when it can just be a mental thought. It doesn't have to actually be because of an experience. But if you have had um, a physical trauma, you're not going to put your hand up for sex for a long, long time. The pelvic floor becomes like a, um, a little um, police station. And it's not going to open up and allow the vagina to stretch and expand. So trying to have sex when you, you have any resistance is only going to make it even worse as time goes on. Yes. So you have to take it slowly. So, I mean, so the birth naturally can leave scarring and, um, and the cesarean can cause a lot of stress on the pelvic floor overall. But mm -hmm. if a woman yeah. has had a cesarean section, should she mm -hmm. wait until she's fully recovered um, to have intercourse again? And if so, why? Why is that so important for the body? What, the cesarean? Well, let me tell you, you know, it's pretty hard to walk for a few weeks. You're doubled over. Um, and... I guess you would have to be, here's one of the important takeaways from this. After you've had a child, lube, lubrication is your best friend. So as long as there's lots and lots of lube um, and you do, the guy does um, put time into um, making her feel good with his hands, which is some kind of a massage. Not, not all women like, you know, like a, a traditional massage, but, you know what? The one that I absolutely love was having my face stroked like that 
uh, that can just put me immediately into a yes what would you like now zone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the, so the, the other thing is position um it's it, you certainly if you've had a cesarean you don't want your your man on top of you heaving up and down um so better better off to do a spooning with the leg over um, but once again the man really has to put some attention into um, making her pink bits uh, swollen, engorged, ready, use the lube to help out. Um, men often don't know where they're allowed to touch anymore. If he touches her breasts and he drips, she, you know, the, he gets milk squirted all over him. It's like, well, <laughs> hang on, that's not very sexy. They didn't do that before. Um, no. <laughs> so, I mean, medically, do you need to have a doctor to give you the all clear before sort of reigniting your sex life again? Um, I don't know what they're saying now about that. It's been so long ago. My children are 40 and 38. Um, I think that, you know, everybody who's having their first child um, should check that out with the GP as part of their, you know, pre-birth um, education. Yes. So definitely if something doesn't feel right, it, it is very important to, to check up and see your GP, of course. If yes. And, and right. if it's continuing to give you pain, you must see maybe, you know, even... Um, um, even the a gynecologist um, as well and, and get to get to the bottom of it yeah yeah and you mentioned breastfeeding before too so i understand that if a woman is breastfeeding then it can take more time for her libido to return than it would if she isn't bre breastfeeding um mm -hmm. is this because breastfeeding keeps um the estrogen levels low is that the reason why uh, certainly it's not just estrogen i think but uh, it's certainly the hormonal bank um, that oxytocin, you know, the, the nurturing of the baby, the baby at breast, the, the Mona Lisa smile on her face, you know, when she, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the most dreamy, dreamy trance, really, as a hypnotherapist, I recall that. Um, and time kind of stands still, too. So, so that's all a good thing. So, and yet, you know, it, it, nowadays, uh, we have no rights or wrongs about breastfeeding. And, um, and you should do what works for you and what works for your baby. And I mean, are there any other hormonal changes that can make a woman un unresponsive at all? Um, well, there's no, uh, no lubrication of her vagina. Now you don't have to be lubricated. It's best to be lubricated if you're going to have intercourse, but when you lubricate, when you get aroused, um, there are other things happening. And uh, so your hormones need to be cooperative for those other things to happen. One of the things that has to happen is that the vagina actually tents. Um, the internal organs, the stomach um, and the womb uh, will, will sort of be lifted up by the tent and the vagina expands. So all of this depends on hormonal reactivity and, um, and it may not be um, you know, possible for six months, much less six weeks. Yeah. And I mean, when there has been um, a, maybe a larger gap in time, or irrespective of how long that gap in time has been since a couple has had mm. sex, it may feel mm -hmm. awkward to start up again. So what advice do mm. you have for them to strengthen their, their intimate bond again? Well, let, let's just take one step back, though, and go that let's look at how long it's been since they've had sex. Because um, pre-birth, uh, everybody's different. But in my practice, I remember the man who was sex phobic as his woman um, uh, grew with baby in her tummy. And, and it was like, this that's common. Is, a, is that common? Yeah, this is a national treasure uh, that, you know, I am responsible for, and I don't want to cause any upset to this child. And so, you know, a woman might come in saying, you know, I was really horny at about the sixth Try, uh, it's some, what's it called trimester um but he didn't even want to you know come near me and um and it's been a year and now i'm horny again and and now it's all about him and the baby so you know it depends what's happening how much sex you were having before what sort of sex you were having before um how easy it was there then because you know some people do exist on very awkward sex for a long time that's why they need to come and see a sex therapist to learn how to relax into it mm -hmm. so once we take into that um, let's look at what it was like before now how do we get started again the ideal way is the massages can i tell you one of my favorite techniques i would love to hear about it 
Right. Now, this actually goes back for all the women who are listening, who um, some women never even have massages. They feel vulnerable. They won't even have a sports massages, massage. But I want those women to ask themselves, when I do um, have a massage, um, do I have my legs apart? Men get in there with the masseur and the you know table and legs go flopping like this. And women, it's almost like that lady likeness about us. And so simply by laying on our tummy naked with our legs apart for our male partner to begin to massage using a really good, say, uh, avocado or almond oil from the whole food you know shop, um, just feeling vulnerable like that and knowing that this is your lover, this is the man that you trust and who thinks that you're a goddess um, is a wonderful way to start. But it's not, I mean, yes, you might also want the massage where you're sitting between his feet watching telly and he gives you a head massage or a shoulder massage. You know, that's more about love. Um, and this is something else I want to bring up too that not everybody knows about, but the five love languages. You know about them, Rachel, don't you? I've heard what? about them, but yeah. Okay, so uh, this was invented by Gary Chapman, an American. And uh, I actually think in Australia, most of us are not that keen on the fifth one, which is gifts. And when we're talking about pregnancy and then after having the baby, um, we're not talking about gifts. So let's park that one. Oh, though I always like to say, when I went to uh, America to a big mall for the very first time, Hallmark Cards was as big as Bunnings because it was gifts. And, and I, oh, that's where he got that from. But the other um, four love languages are crucially important. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, no. <laughs> no. There's, let's say the other one, um, which is my husband's and my favourite one, quality time. <laughs> yes. You're not going to get much yes. quality. You're not going <laughs> to get much quality time. <laughs> uh, so sitting between his legs watching telly is a good time to call that quality time. Uh, but the other three are crucial. Yes. And so, um, and so one of them is called acts of service. Mm -hmm. That is doing something, uh, take, taking the initiative to do something to help the other person. Now, this is where the guy can step into his stride. You know, read her mind, anticipate her needs. Um, if you, and you, you know, it's not easy for some people. Access of service is actually my lowest one before gifts. Every now and again, my husband gets grumpy with me and I think, ooh, I'm not doing enough around the house. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's and a great exercise for, for, for couples to sit down and actually work out this between them so they, mm, they can understand mm. how the other person likes to receive attention and love as well. Because you may think, mm. you know, I'm, I'm doing one thing and it's not actually making any difference on the other end. So no, you have so, to talk the other one's love language. So you can just go online and download the test and do it, you know, now, whatever stage you're at, you never, it's never too late to learn. So his access service, her words of affirmation. So she needs to keep telling him. Um, she's not going to tell him he's a hunk of spunk and, you know, like she can't wait to be in bed with him because she's, she's just too busy. But she can say how much she loves him, how much she depends on him, how he is her rock. Um, because the man might feel rejected if she's just focused on the baby all the time. Mm -hmm. And if he's a words of affirmation man, he will need that. But then there is also the touch, just as I love this. Find out what does your man love. You know, he might like just the, the hand on the shoulder. Um, he might like a special kiss you know, mm -hmm. on the side of his mouth rather than a full-on patch. So learn what it is that he needs for him to feel good about you touching him. Mm -hmm. And is one of the most positive approaches just patience and understanding in general? You better. <laughs> yes, from both people. Um, so, uh, I, I actually also think people, that the couple have to do whatever they can to have turns sleeping. When, when I was having my children, men still would not change nappies or get up in the middle of the night to burp the baby or feed the baby. Thank goodness that's in the olden days now. Um, so you might both be wrung out and tired. So even if it's just an hour and even if you're not really asleep, find one of somebody's meditation audios, but just laying down in a bed that's not your bed and not the baby's room, um, maybe with some, um, you know, some, some, some oils, burning oils, and, um, and the dimmed light for an hour is going to rejuvenate you in a way that 
you know, if you just keep going and going and going at it, you're just going to burn all your batteries. Yes. And I mean, understanding that there are so many changes, I mean, how can couples find new ways to express their physical attraction and affection again? Um, I like, because I'm a wordsmith having written all those books, for those people who are good at word, fantasise together. That could be very horny or it could be very funny. Now, you can fantasise about things that you have done in the past. Remember the time, you know, you came in um, the door, you say to your man, and um, you told me to just throw some sexy things in a case and some high heels and you took me to the Hyatt. And um, we didn't even go out to dinner. We just had room service. And remember when we showered together? So you're really recalling that fabulous, romantic, sexy time. Uh, and then another option, of course, is to make it up. Imagine <laughs> if. And, and um, people who are good with words can do that, but see, not everybody can do that. Yes. So for the, for the people that are not, what, what can they do then? Um, they can read erotic literature to each other. Um, you might need to suss each other out. Uh, like, for instance, the, the um, um, what's it called again? Um, the Fifty Shades of Grey uh, just made me laugh. Uh, but there's so much erotica that you can find online. Uh, so find what you like and read that to each other. Um, what, what else could you do? Um, well, I mean... Do, do, make, make up a little fetish. Maybe, maybe he likes um, to have a foot rub, particularly between his toes or something like that. Just that try different things. Just try different things. Yes, yes absolutely. Mm. And I'd love to mm. know, what are the main considerations that a new father needs um, to have for the mother of his baby um, in regards to the changes that her body has gone through and how it affects their intimacy overall? Well, she, she's very likely to have lost a lot of, um, you know, um, body confidence. Um, she's finally had to face the fact of the flab um, and uh, the fact that she, um, you know, she can't find time to, you know, to really tease herself up and look, look like that hottie that she used to be. Nevertheless, he, he should not pour on the fact that, oh, you're still my sexy girl, because that'll make her feel like sex is going to be a chore. And that's like a it's turn different. off rather than a turn on. But certainly beautiful. You are so beautiful. You are glowing. Motherhood really suits you. Um, I love the sparkle in your eyes when, you know, you hear the noise that the, 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 the baby's making when, that, when, when, when they wake up. But, you know, really pull on those sorts of words. You know, and if, if you really did um, want to make it wonderful, uh, just as I uh, have all, uh, often made a hypnosis birthing audio for people over the years, why don't you spend time before the birth talking about all of these things, nutting them out? I don't think there's a book written about that yet, Rachel. Maybe I should write that one. I think you should. I think you should. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And look, and just with the, the experts that we speak to all the time, the more that you can plan for what happens um, after the, the arrival of the baby, um, whilst you're, you know, in, in the, in, either one of your, your, your trimesters and in, and in pregnancy, the better it's going to be. And I think it's just establishing expectations is one of the most important things. And every expert that we speak mm. to just keeps reaffirming that communication in any way, shape or form is one of the most mm. important things mm -hmm. and can't be yes. understated by any stretch mm -hmm. of the imagination. So, mm. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. You, you expressed that really well. Uh, I think you have to also talk about lowering your standards around the household and what does that mean um what what does that mean specifically you know vacuum once a week um uh, alternate who's going to be the cook um make casseroles in advance and you know put up with less than gourmet cooking so the more that you've made that list agreed on that list and then you implement the list you're taking away an awful lot of stress Mm. And because, if the money is there, yeah. um, what we hear time and time mm. again too is even if you just invest that fifty dollars a week in a house cleaner, that could be the best fifty dollars you've spent, <laughs> just for the sake oh, of yes. arguments and those types of things as well. If mm. the money is there for that, but if if not, yes. definitely establishing, I think, um, and and lowering your mm. standards and having just that agreement mm -hmm. um, on, on the household chores and what the mm. the house is going to look and feel like, I think is a great mm -hmm. idea. What mm -hmm. a great idea mm -hmm. that is. Um, yeah. 
And um, I understand the hormones, um, estrogen and pro- pro- how do I pronounce it? Progesterone. Is it progesterone? Yeah, progesterone. Yep. Yes. Are, are crucial to the baby's health and development during pregnancy, but they um, also happen to be vital to um, a woman's sex drive, also. And the levels of these mm. hormones are incredibly high um, during pregnancy. Um, are they? They would be. Look, I'm going to have to back off from this, Rachel, because that's not my expertise. Okay, that's Um, okay. It's interesting that testosterone is thought to be the male hormone, though, but women have testosterone as well. And um, so it's much more complicated than just saying that goes up or it goes down. So what I could see from the research is that once the baby is born, that that declines dramatically um, back into pre-pregnancy levels. So this means that um, that the woman may not feel any se- sexual desire for a few weeks um, at a minimum after after the months, birth. months, months. Yeah, months yeah. So generally, months. yeah. So so, gen- so generally at that point, um, you know, should a woman's body um, be I guess fully, it would have to be fully recovered from the birth to be ready for intimacy again. Um, and mm. in, in that respect, I was just going to ask you how long, long that can take, but that can take any, any stretch of the imagination. As you said, over 12 months, that can t- take. Yes. I know. Yes. Well, I think I read a stat that 40% of couples have not had sex by the first year. Yes. And if that's true, that means that, you know, there's a lot of people that have to lower their expectations out there. Yes. And look, you know, a woman's body goes through an incredible amount during pregnancy and childbirth, um, both internally and externally, um, sort of can leave a woman feeling very sensitive about the changes to her body. Um, I mean, how can a man best show um, some tenderness to make her feel special and deeply loved? You were mentioning before, it's just in, in the phrasing and using different words um, that he may have used previously. Is there anything else? Mm-hmm. Well, what kind of hugs he's giving her? Um, I mean, so many women have said that my my man comes into the room and says, can I have a hug? And his hug is boobs crutch. (laughs) And and don't do that. And for don't do any of that stuff. And also for um, the for for the woman, don't touch her on the tummy. If she's, you know, getting really upset about her flabby bits. just, you know, really hold her in your arms tightly. Nothing reassures a woman and makes her fall, more, fall in love with her man even more than being held like that. Um, the security, and just being that told, feeling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And being told that, you know, look, I'm here for you. I will protect you no matter what. Look, a lot of it doesn't even have to make sense. Just say it, guys. I mean, is it common also that um, some men can feel like they're sort of coming second best in their relationship with, you know, Mm. the focus primarily on the baby? uh, And that is, of course, with good reason. I mean, mean, what are the main Mm. considerations that a new mother needs to have for her male partner on the flip side in regards to, you know, sort of their needs? Uh, Well, it's commonly believed that women are more irrational but when a guy is feeling um, rejected, un- undesired, um, somewhat useless uh, with uh, mum and baby, um, he can go irrational and start to really chew it up inside and feel intensely, um, you know, not needed. So don't think that your man is as tough as, you know, society makes out. And that, that's why he needs lots and lots of reassurance that you depend on him. Yes, absolutely. And mm. I oh look, there's one more thing I want to say about the sex stuff, though. Yeah, this is this is the naughty and cheeky bit that I was telling you about before the interview. <laughs> Here um, we go. <laughs> remembering, remembering that lube is 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 everybody's best friend. Um, well, uh, there's it, it in my in my books. I try to be user friendly, and I talk about the five T words um, in, when it comes to sex. And the first one is how you think about it. So we've been talking about how to think positively. How you talk about it is the next one. So talk about it. Don't, don't fester. Don't brood. You know, if, if you're worried, if you're feeling rejected, speak up. And then there's three things that you can do. And if we remember that I'm using T words so we can remember them. The next one is touch. Then there's um, tongue, which is uh, maybe even oral sex. And then there's thrust, which is intercourse. So let's just go back to touch. Um, I would like to recommend that no matter how tired she is, um, at least once a fortnight, she gets that lube, 
she lays her man down and she gives him the touch job or the hand job. Um, you can choose a piece of music, maybe only four minutes long. So you say, look, honey, I'm just going to love to please you for four minutes. And after that, you're on your own. <laughs> you know what's going to happen then. Um, but at least, you know, pleasure him in that way. Make him feel like a king. Make him feel that you're thinking that he's worthwhile. And really, it's, it's no skin off your nose, so to speak. Just make that effort and you will have a very happy man on your hands. In fact, Rachel, I say that every man in the world was given a hand job by his woman on Tuesday nights. Maybe there'd be no wars. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. <laughs> That, 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 right. that excludes the Taliban because they're, they're, they're horrible, the Taliban. They, they don't care. Okay, what's the next one? <laughs> no, that's, they... that, that, that's it. That's an naughty and cheeky bit. That's the naughty and cheeky bits done. Okay. Well, yeah. following on from that, I just wanted to mention that I understand that you and your daughter, Ella, are the only mother-daughter sex experts in Australia and are launching a new online course called um, Women's Pleasure Power Gold Course. So um, can you tell us um, a little bit about this? I understand you're um, on a mission to empower every mother and daughter to have open, honest, caring and real communication um, about sex through, um, throughout their lifetime. So what can you tell us about the course? Well, I'll tell you by asking you a question. Um, most women, if they're asked, what did your mother talk to you or teach you about sex, will say two things. Aha, nothing or don't get pregnant. And so Ella and I are here to actually break through that and encourage women, mothers and daughters. And look at us, the mother and the daughter, um, I have been trained as a clinical psychologist, so I very much have always come from the head. Ella's been trained as a tantric goddess. And um, so she's very much from the heart. So we are now teaching women to come from the head and the heart um, and to be willing to talk to their mothers or your mother figure, whoever it is in your life, and really just start talking to every woman about uh, what are the things in the way of us all being sex goddesses? In fact, I, I actually thought that um, um, maybe another time you could have Ella coming on and talking about tantric sex practices for new mums and dads because they take a, all the heat off that it has to be intercourse. And so I'm not the expert to do that, but perhaps one day, and, and yeah. I'm sure that she could. She if could it's going to help, and then completely open podcast. to it. Absolutely. Yes, because it's, it's just a brilliant technology. I mean, let's face it, it's been around for 3,000 years. So it's definitely worked. Tantric practices, yeah. Okay, would love to hear anyway, all Anyway, the that. other thing is this course is um, um, uh, pleasurepowerexperts.com.au, gold course, and it's $99 US at the moment, and that's a really special price down from 297 But if any of your listeners can jump onto it for the next 30 days they've got a coupon called now we'll I'm have it in the show notes no, we can go, have it. Yeah. oh good oh, go for gold yeah, okay in the show notes great go yeah. for gold and you can get um 15 percent off that 99 dollars. it's a very empowering thing it's about women stepping into their power and owning it and wanting to be the sex goddess that's really deep down inside Wonderful. Dr. Jen, this has been a fantastic chat. If you were to summarise your key messages for anyone watching and listening, what would they be? I think you touched on it before, and that is to be patient uh, with yourselves, be patient with each other, um, to be honest and open in your communication, um, and, and just lighten up, have a sense of humour, um, and really yeah, get in as many laughs as you can. Thank you. And look, if anyone's got any other questions, just generally, whereabouts can they find you? Well, I have uh, many websites because, you know, I've written books about parenting as well about sex, but uh, you can find me on the web. Just Google Dr. Janet Hall and choose whichever one is your flavour of the moment. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Jan. I've loved this chat. Take care and look forward to another one, hopefully in the not too distant future. Until then, stay Thank safe. Thank you, Rachel. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Right, bye.